Hey everyone, welcome to episode 15. This is the first part of a series of videos uh, in which I'll be looking at building a diorama from the ground up. In this first video, we'll be looking at the basic materials that we'll need. This is the fun part. We've now painted all our figures, all the, all the vehicles have been completed. And the next step is to place everything in a realistic looking real world scene. And uh, in this first video, I'll be looking at uh, preparing all the basic materials that we'll use to construct uh, a diorama. Because we'll be pouring epoxy resin, I need a tray of some sorts and uh, these fiberboard trays, uh, they're also called super, would work very well for that purpose. I'll be using some, uh, some foam, in this case uh, high density foam from an old hiking mattress. It's a 10 millimeter foam and you might ask why foam? Well you remember we pinned all the figures and all the vehicles and uh, it makes it very easy to just push the pins into the foam. I don't need to glue any wheels or any feet uh, to the diorama, that's the reason why I use foam. We'll also be using these uh, extruded polystyrene foam blocks from uh, Green Stuff World to construct the physical uh, groundwork and uh, more on this a bit later. The method I'll be showing you here and in the following videos is my way of doing this. Um, it's not the way, but um, I've always built my dioramas this way and uh, it works well for me, so maybe it'll work for you, for you too. So let's get started. The very first step is to do a proper planning where we want to place uh, the different elements in the diorama. For this, I rely on pen and paper. This needs to be the, the same size as the interior of the tray. I also cut the, uh, the foam, the 10 millimeter foam. An easy way to do this is just to turn the tray upside down and uh, press an imprint of it into the foam. It makes it easy to see where I need to cut the, uh, the foam to the, the, exact, uh, the exact size. You'll see there's the, there's the imprint. So once I've cut the foam, I can now place this inside the tray, put my paper on top, and I can now start pinning the different figures and, and vehicles on the paper and position them exactly where I want them. The benefit of this, this way of working is I can basically position things perfectly. I can try different layouts, different setups until I'm completely happy. And uh, then once everything, all the figures are placed, all the vehicles are placed, I can uh, then use a marker and uh, I can start drawing the exact positions. This will help me to uh, cut foam later on to do the landscaping and uh, where I need to place different things. So, now that I've got the basic plan, I can start working with the foam. I'll be using this blue foam for the, uh, for the raised road surface. And uh, I'll need two blocks, and these need to be cut to shape. Now, I don't have a hot wire cutter, so uh, I'll be doing this by brute force with a hobby knife. The first step, of course, being to mark the sections of the block that I need. And uh, then start cutting the foam. It's the first time I used this material. One of the things I had to remind myself of is, uh, of course, to mark the different uh, different pieces of material uh, that I use, which which side is up and which side is down, to uh, to avoid what you're seeing happening right here on your screen now. Don't worry, eventually I got it right. So after I eventually figured out which side is up and I marked the uh, the foam blocks, I can I can proceed to glue these together. Now, the uh, instructions say to use hot glue. PVA glue might not be the solution here, and indeed hot glue is the best solution to uh, to glue these blocks together. makes an instant bond and there we go that's the road surface similar to our reference picture we can now move on to the next step now in the reference picture you'll see these um, these walls at the side they're a bit rounded with the road surface on top and to do that I'll start shaping the foam again I do not have a hot wire cutter so I went the messy route and I used a hobby knife and also the, the sand on my Dremel uh, Dremel tool Again, this makes a huge mess, so please make sure you wear a respirator so you don't inhale this stuff. 
noisy and messy, but it gets the job done. I also wanted to add a crater, typical to the, um, the reference pictures that one sees from the wall. And for this, I used the Dremel tool and also sanded. This material can be sanded like, like, uh, like wood. And there we go. This is the result after a few hours of working the foam. Remember to properly clean your workspace of all the, uh, the styrofoam dust. Um, you don't want that getting into your paint. Now, this needs to fit on top of the, uh, the 10 millimeter foam that we used earlier. Make sure it's a, it's a tight fit because again, we'll be pouring epoxy resin. And uh, I also fitted this little piece. It's the dike wall that uh, connects all the different rice paddies. During this stage, I also make uh, provision for little items that I want to add. For instance, this, this broken tree stump right next to the, uh, to the bomb crater. One could say it's a tree that was destroyed when the, uh, the bomb or the mortar hit that section of road. And it will fit nicely into that little space right there. During this stage of construction, I find I've changed my mind a lot. And uh, one of the things I discovered was that the, um, the rice paddies were going to be too low. And uh, for that reason, I cut these little sections of five millimeter foam just to raise the, uh, the paddies themselves a little bit. It also make it easier um, to build the little rice plants uh, on, a, on a section of, of, of foam and then just insert it later. And uh, these two sections will make that easier. I need to prepare the tray itself as well and uh, for that I first sand it down. This material is very easy to work with. It's also called super wood in South Africa. And uh, I then use ordinary rattle can uh, enamel paint just to uh, give it a few coats. In this case I use black. To get a nice smooth uh, paint uh, coat on this I spray several coats of uh, black paint sand it down and finally I spray a satin uh, varnish layer and there we go that's just the tray it's now ready to receive these foam blocks and uh, I'll need to put everything together in the end to uh, in order to pour the resin and that's it for part one this is this covers all the materials all the preparation and uh, in the next video I'll be moving on to the uh, the landscape itself adding some texture and some color for those of you following along, this is all the materials that I used, all the foams, all the, uh, all the spray paint. If you're curious to, uh, to follow the rest of the build, you can follow me on Instagram. I post regular updates there. And that's it for, for part one. Uh, see you again in part two.